Welcome everybody to the Sentinel Report. I am your host, Alex Newman. Thanks so much for joining us on this beautiful day that the Lord has made. As I mentioned last week, I am sitting at Camp Constitution. We broadcasted here uh, last year live, and so I'm going to have some amazing, amazing guests for you starting today with the big cheese of Camp Constitution, <laughs> Hal Shirtlift. Um, and then we'll also bring in the one and only, the great Reverend Stephen Kraft for our second segment. But... Um, Big things happening, obviously, in the world. We'll talk a little bit about that. But we'll start like we do every day with a word from the Word of God. This comes out of Daniel chapter 2. And if you haven't read Daniel lately, go reread it. But uh, Daniel chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, to whom belong wisdom and might. He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. And boy, ain't that the truth, folks. Uh, we need to remember that God is sovereign. God has history in his hands. And so even if things seem overwhelming and like they're maybe not going the way we want them to go, we need to remember that God ultimately has the final say. And so uh, we need to worry less and trust more. Mm -hmm. But, of course, we need to be busy and we need to occupy till he comes. Also, folks, uh, you know food is something we all take for granted until it's gone, <laughs> right? Uh, and we live in very strange times. So when disasters happen, food gets very hard to find. You remember some of the COVID craziness, like toilet paper, mm -hmm. right? Panic spreads like wildfire. Grocery stores get stripped bare within hours. Imagine not being able to feed your family, even just for a week. So uh, do you have a proper supply of emergency food on hand? If not, now would be a very, very good time to get that done while things are still relatively calm. Uh, the company most Americans are choosing is My Patriot Supply. It is the nation's largest preparedness company. It's got millions of satisfied and well-prepared customers. And if you go to preparewithsentinel.com, that's preparewithsentinel.com, you see it on your screen right now, you're going to get yourself some incredible deals, including a one-week supply of emergency food at an amazing price. Uh, it comes in a nifty ammo can. It's loaded with delicious meals that you will love. So no skimping on taste, calories, or protein. You should get enough for you and your whole family right now. And that's at preparewithsentinel.com. Preparewithsentinel.com. You also get free shipping when you go through preparewithsentinel.com. And uh, folks, I'll tell you what, I've been buying from them for years and years. And even though I don't worry too much, uh, I do think it is prudent to be prepared. So our guest today is a uh, returning guest, uh, great American, Hal Shirtliff. Uh, I've known Hal for many years. Uh, he is, like I said, a great American. He also won an incredible victory at the Supreme right. Court, 9-0, to zero, uh, total smackdown for the city of Boston. And I want to ask you something about that later. I was just in Boston. We did the Freedom Trail. But uh, Hal is also, like I said, the big cheese here at Camp Constitution. That's why I have a yellow shirt. The big <laughs> <laughs> right. And it's a great shirt. It says, Fight Communist open up a lemonade stand. Um, so Camp Constitution does great things. Every year they bring together uh, some of the greatest young Americans here to, uh, we're in New Hampshire right now, right. Um, beautiful, beautiful mountain place, and uh, they get a great education on our incredible history, our heritage as Americans. They learn a lot about the Bible. They hear from some extraordinary, extraordinary speakers, some of whom we will be bringing to you as guests over the next few days. Um, Hal, like I said uh, a moment ago when I was introducing you, you won a total smackdown against the Supreme, right. uh, against the city of Boston. Uh, I was just in Boston, and uh, we, we did part of the Freedom Trail, and so we stopped at the King's Chapel. Oh, yes. Yep. And, uh, and there was a rainbow flag outside. Yeah, so you oh, know this. Oh, and, and a Black Lives Matter <laughs> flag. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and my kids are like, Dad, why, why is there a, a pride flag up there? I, said, I don't know. We have to go and find out. Turns out it's uh, operated by the... Um, the Unitarians, Unitarian right? Church, so it's yeah. not a government building. But um, t talk a little bit about your case. Uh, you beat the, the city of Boston was flying homo flags and Chinese communist flags and Muslim flags, but they wouldn't fly the Christian flag. So you took them to court and you won. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Well, back in '17, we wanted to fly the Christian flag to commemorate Constitution Day, as well as Boston's rich Christian history. And so I uh, got a hold of the lady that I dealt with several years before that when we flew the Gadsden flag without any incident, which is also <coughs> the one with the Bible stands on it, don't try to me. And we had no trouble with that one. And uh, this time, uh, it took about a month before I got a final no. And when the lady got back to me, she said, I know this isn't over. She said, but you, you've been denied. And I said, okay, can I get a letter or an email with the official response? And that was their mistake. Yes, they sent me an email and he said, it's a separation of churches, I'm paraphrasing, 
Uh, but he said, you can fly a secular flag, we'll consider a secular flag, and then I was told that, well, you can have a ceremony, you can bring Christian flags with you, you just can't fly one. I said, well, it's a flag raising ceremony. It wouldn't be much of a ceremony if you didn't fly a flag. <laughs> so, uh, in, in the response to, uh, in the email was embedded the city seal. And what did you know? The city seal has a Bible verse. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. It's, in Latin. it's in Latin. It's in Latin, right? <laughs> and uh, I know a few words. You probably speak it fluently, but I know a few words. So it's from first, I think it's from first Kings. May God favor us as he favored our forefathers. That's on the city seal. It's also on the city flag. So uh, to make a long story short, uh, I was rec Liberty Council was recommended to me. And I reached out to them, and within less than... 12 hours, they called me, Richard Mast, who, the attorney who does, decides, or I guess he's one of the ones that determines what they take, what they don't take. He said, we want to take your case. And they took it for three reasons. It's winnable, it will set a precedent, I think, which is the most important. And the third one is that the individual organization is credible. Well, okay, that was a bit of a stretch, but the first two, <laughs> the first two has been pretty well. And, and it took almost five years from from the demand letter that went out in <coughs> September of 17 to we actually, we won the case, 9-0, that was announced May uh, 2nd or 3rd of last year. And then we finally, we actually flew the Christian flag in City Hall Plaza. And the same people that we had invited to speak, Reverend Kraft, who will be coming on in a few minutes, Pastor William Levy, Richard Howell, who's a uh, historian, uh, they were all there. And, uh, you know, if the city just let us have the, there was like 200 people there, media from all over the country, if they just let us do it way back five years ago, they would have saved themselves, well... Millions of dollars. <laughs> they had to pay $2.1 in mm. legal fees to Liberty Council. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they had to pay their own attorneys, probably another million or more. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of money where they could have just let us have the permit, have our ceremony. But I say God's hand was in this from the very beginning. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't just a six to three, a decision to decision, five, four, six, three. It's like a, in a, in a baseball game. You win by 100 runs or you win by one run. It's a victory, right? Yeah. But nine zero, it's, it was a slam dunk. Yep. And so we're very grateful that that was how they ruled. And, but I think what's more important is that a precedent was set. Mm -hmm. And something called the lemon test was a Supreme Court made, they made 100 years of bad decisions. <laughs> starting to get a few, a few of them, are, get, get a few right. But before Roe v. Wade, there was something called the uh, uh, Lemon versus Kurtzman. Uh, and Lemon was an atheist from uh, Pennsylvania. He had a child in the school system. And it had something to do with money, tax money going to a parochial school. It was also happening in Rhode Island. And so with the help of whatever group uh, took, took his case, uh, he won his case. But what was even worse is that people would see this Lemon, this lemon law or Lemon decision, not Lemon law, that deals with automobiles, uh, uh, but uh, they would look at this and say, well, gee, you can't bring your crucifix into a classroom. You can't bring a Bible in the classroom. You can't say, God bless you, if someone sneezes. So it, it, it took it to extremes. So this was one of the cases that really put the lemon test to rest, mm -hmm. as one of Liberty Council staff uh, ladies said. And that, that's what we're very happy about that. But what's been going on around the country, we've seen a lot of pushback against mm -hmm. in the culture war. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Serious pushback, really for the first time at this extent in a long time. And I'm getting calls from people in the Midwest, in California, in Florida, uh, and they'll say, hey, uh, my town just banned all flags except for the U.S. flag, or, or we want to raise a we want to raise a Christian flag or pro family flag, and how, how you give me some suggestions and what have you. So we're kind of excited about that. In yeah. fact, Liberty Council just authored an article at their web website, lc.org, and they authored an article about the shirtlift case that since the decision and how many towns and cities around the country have changed their policy. In some cases, started one because they didn't have one. And you know, figure that they'll be in for some uh, legal problems. The city of Gloucester, Massachusetts, will be sued by Liberty Council very soon. They've already agreed to take a case there. A gentleman that's a lifetime resident heard about our. It was motivated by our case, and I uh, said, "Hey, I want to raise the Christian flag. Uh, Good Friday to Easter, or something like that." And no, you can't raise it. No. Meanwhile, they're raising the, the so-called Pride flag and <laughs> other flags. So, um, you know, they're going to have to, they may have a very expensive uh, lesson in, uh, in the First Amendment. Yeah, and, and I think that's one of the biggest benefits that came out of this case is that all these vile city governments and state governments that thought, hey, let's celebrate pride in sin, um, mm -hmm. now they can't do that anymore, at least not without well, allowing Christians yeah, to fly their own. That's true, and there's, there's a few cities have somehow tried to 
skate around it, and I think if it's challenged, it may you know, they may lose in court. So mm -hmm. well, well, you know, sometimes these things take a while to play out. Yeah. You know, so every, in every case is a little different. Yeah. Now Delaware, Ohio, they said, well, if you flew a, if you owned a flag before a policy was set. Uh, it's okay to do it. So the pride flags, are, but not the Christian flag. Well, I don't know about that. So It'll be interesting to see yeah. how that plays out. I, I hope uh, we get some more good rulings in that respect. Uh, we've got a few minutes before we go to break. Al. I wanted to ask about some of the other recent Supreme Court rulings. Uh, I think a lot of people are... Uh, at least a little bit encouraged by some of what's happening. We saw um, racism in uh, admissions to university <coughs> yes. fall. Yes. We saw uh, right. religious liberty upheld. The lady who didn't want to make websites. Colorado. For, yeah, so-called homosexual the post, marriages. the postal worker from Pennsylvania, he won a 9-0 decision, too. Wow. Which so, even Katan, what's her name, Katanji Brown, mm. she even got it Jackson. right, you know? Oh, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, so, so there's been these rulings that mm -hmm. seem encouraging, but then at the same time we see now growing efforts to delegitimize the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw AOC wants to haul uh, members of the court in for questioning, uh, you know, as if they were uh, some sort of subordinates. But uh, what, what do you make of the Supreme Court rulings? I mean, sh should we be excited? Should we be encouraged by what's happening there? I think we should be encouraged uh, because it's the first time it's happened in a long mm -hmm. time. You know, it seemed like every decision in 2015 you had that decision that made uh, so-called homosexual marriage legitimate. Oberfell, and, yeah. And, yeah, the Oberfell case. And that led to every, not every, but towns and cities and states promoting it <clears throat> because they say it's now a compelling, we have a compelling interest because of that decision, mm -hmm. you see. Uh, and, of course, uh, we saw the um, Roe v. Wade overturned. I didn't think that will happen in my lifetime. Yeah. And so I was so excited. In fact... The leak happened the same day mm -hmm. of our case, like 12 hours later. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, on, I'm, about, I'm about to get on Newsmax, you know, on the Rob Schmidt show. And that's when I, I thought, oh, they're going to bump me up. And they said, would you mind talking about Roe v. Wade? I said, I'd be delighted to talk about Roe v. Wade. They had no idea what position of Roe v. Wade. And so I gave my position. In fact, I plugged the movie Roe v. Wade, a good chance. Oh, I said nice. to the listeners, if you really want to get a good understanding of how horrific that decision was, it had nothing to do with the Constitution. It was all about pressure, political pressure. <clears throat> and even two justices had, one had a wife and one had a daughter that worked for Planned Parenthood, and they would have recused themselves. Wow. Know? And so that movie pointed that out, and I highly recommend that movie. So where do we go from here, Hal, with the Supreme Court? I mean, it, it does look like Democrats want to oust uh, probably the greatest justice we have currently on the bench, Clarence at least, Thomas, yeah, yeah. Thomas, at least yeah. from a constitutional perspective. He, he, you know, now that Antonin Scalia is gone, he is now the reigning constitutionalist on the bench, uh, and they're accusing him of all sorts of silly things and oh, making a mountain out of a molehill. Uh, where do you think this goes? Uh, is the Supreme Court going to be able to keep reigning in, at least little by little, the excesses of the Biden administration? Well, our founders gave us a great constitution, so it made that type of thing very difficult. It made it very difficult to get amendments passed, and uh, uh, even to stack the Supreme Court, which some of Franklin Roosevelt tried to do back in the 1930s. And there was a lot of pushback, even among people in his own, in his own circle. I think what he wanted to do is that the minute a Supreme Court justice became 75, automatically you would add another one. Mm -hmm. I think that was how they planned to do it. And it didn't happen. And you know what it is, is that we f conservatives finally have got a majority in the Supreme Court, and they're ruling according to the Constitution. And the left doesn't like that. So they do what they always do. You know, they complain and they scream and they threaten. <laughs> so what you expect, what, what would you expect for AOC to do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But say, we're going we're gonna to drag in Clarence Thomas. They have to be impeached. That's the only way. They can, and, it's, and I know that few have been impeached but never removed. I think one back in the, I, you know, I wrote an article about it, I forget, uh, Salmon. Oh, there's quite a few who should have been yeah, impeached. Oh, yeah. Earl he Warren was, he, looking he, at you. But, but Earl <laughs> Warren, that was the case against Earl Warren, too. It was the John mm -hmm. Birch Society's campaign to impeach Earl Warren. Yeah. But at least it taught people about the, about <clears> the Supreme Court that they're not, these nine people in black robes are not the ultimate rulers. Right. And the Supreme Court is the least powerful branch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, it, of course, they can't enforce decisions. It's up to, in fact, Congress, under the Constitution, Congress can pass a law and preclude the Supreme Court from judging, from hearing it. Yeah. They did that with labor laws, you see. So um, yeah. that's the route. And, and, uh, but, again, they're going to try what they try. But I don't know that right now they have enough people to do that, to, to carry it out. You know, so. Well, let's keep hoping for good stuff. Uh, folks, stay with us. We're going to go to a quick break, and we'll be right back with more from Hal Shirtliff and also our good friend, Reverend Kraft. Stay tuned. All right, cool. Yeah. Happy you want to come sit with us?
You want me to? No, no, stay. stay okay. We'll have a panel discussion. We'll talk about Camp Constitution. Uh, here, why don't you maybe join in the middle? Hey, guys. Thank you for staying with us here on the Sentinel Report. I'm your host, Alex Newman, and we were just talking about MyPillow. Uh, we sleep on MyPillows every night. When you go to MyPillow.com, use that promo code Newman, and you will get some amazing <coughs> deals on all kinds of great products. Uh, also, if you go to MyStore.com, use that promo code Newman and get some great, great deals. Uh, our additional guest now... If you're a regular viewer, you know Reverend Stephen Kraft. He is maybe one of the greatest reverends in America. Um, he does have a degree from Harvard, but we won't hold that against Amen. him. <laughs> right? um, but uh, no, he's a great American as well. He's one of the teachers here at Camp Constitution. Um, Reverend, uh, let's start with you. You know, we hear so often uh, separation of church and state and keep your religion out of politics. And, uh, you know, from, from the biblical perspective, from the Christian perspective, um, what role should faith play in our political views, in our voting habits, and all the rest of it? God says faith, not faith, blind faith, but faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the true gospel, is supposed to affect every, mm -hmm. every, right. without exception, phase of life. And what has happened is Satan, because John 10.10 10 tells us that the thief, Satan, comes for only three purposes. First, to steal that faith, then to kill the believers who believe it, and then destroy their eternal souls in hell. Mm -hmm. So once we lose faith in the Lord Jesus Christ through his gospel, everything else is up for grabs. See, the Bible is clear in the book of Proverbs that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And the reason why we're in the mess, the hot mess, the hot spiritual <laughs> mess that we're in today is because we have lost, we have lost the true gospel of Jesus Christ and has been usurped with all kinds of nonsense and all kinds of madness, but the stuff that we're believing today are not just foolishness, but damnable foolishness, mm -hmm. abominations to the point that people's lives are being destroyed and their souls are being sold as ransom for the enemy to take to hell. Yep. That's just how dangerous this stuff is. Yep. And, and to go back to what I just saw in Boston, we went into the King's Chapel, this beautiful church building. I think George like, Washington worshipped there. Yeah, it's they actually showed a place the, the where, he, where he said yeah. that was long before they put up a rainbow flag. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. And, you know, we walk in there and there's this individual uh, and and they had the name and then it said pronouns they them and, and I actually asked like who controls this building and they're trying to be nice but who, who, who controls the building and so it's the Unitarian Universalist is what they told me and this is where we are we're, we're just people who hate God who reject the Bible have taken over our institutions not just government even churches and things uh, it's truly amazing uh, Hal so one of the things that you do with Camp Constitution and, and the Rev is uh, the chaplain here at Camp Constitution does a wonderful job uh, but Hal one of the things that you talk about and one of your missions for this camp is of course honoring the past um, and, and I think one of the central themes of that is the, the faith of our forefathers. Right. They, they, these, right. these people were not deists, I mean, you know, maybe a handful of them were, but uh, they were inspired by the scriptures to create our constitutional republic, to create this nation. We just had a wonderful speaker. I hope mm -hmm. we can get her uh, uh, maybe tomorrow or the next day, Charmaine, talking about you know the hand of God in the establishment of our country. Um, what do you think about trying to restore America? Is there any way to do that without uh, repentance and, and restoration of faith? Well, we definitely need to have revival in this nation, and mm -hmm. it starts in the church. Mm -hmm. Not, It's not going to start in Congress, we know that. Clearly. <laughs> uh, right. I think the homeschool mo movement is a, a one, and now it's blossomed and flourishing because of the COVID lockdown, so I think mm -hmm. that's, that's a good sign. Uh, and uh, I think it's so important because if you don't have a love of your country, you don't have much of a future. Mm -hmm. And I and I think I saw, you know, we, we hear these stats all the time, I don't know how accurate they are, but certain people under a certain age aren't <laughs> proud to be, like 60% or 70% under age of 30 aren't proud to be Americans. Yeah. And I was raised to be, my mm -hmm. dad was a World War II veteran. And and I'm very, very well aware of the problems we're facing and some of the, the, the things that country, I mean, there's blemishes, like every great nation is going to have them. And we're not afraid to deal with them yeah. and discuss them. Uh, that doesn't make it the whole, everything bad because of some bad things. That means the whole history. Uh, we have a great history. Yeah, we do. I heard. I, I don't remember. I heard recently that someone said, "Why do you celebrate this? Why do you love this country?" He said, "Look at Arlington National Cemetery. That's why. Mm -hmm. You know, 
And yeah. it kind of shuts up a lot of discussion. Yeah. And actually now the, the totalitarians are even going for Arlington National Cemetery. There's a beautiful monument there made by a, uh, a Jewish veteran, um, I think it was Ezekiel, Moses Ezekiel, mm -hmm. uh, called uh, Reconciliation. And it's about the reconciliation between the North and the South. It's a beautiful monument. But there are uh, images of some black soldiers fighting for the Confederacy. And so now they've determined that they're going to take down this wow, monument. Yeah, um, and, and, and they're trying to get an amendment to the NDAA passed to stop the removal. But uh, the amendment just failed in the House. So now apparently it's going to be offered by uh, Senator Tom Cotton. Um, Reverend, I want to ask you, what, you're, you're going to give a talk tomorrow on what you call crazy racist trash. Wednesday. Uh, oh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. <clears throat> crazy racist trash, which is... Let me just point out that uh, our presentations have been videotaped and uh, they're on our YouTube channel and our Rumble page. So, so how, how do you find the YouTube channel? Uh, Camp oh. Constitution. Camp Constitution. And you'll see it. Please mm -hmm. subscribe. So, and you'll be able to watch the Reverend there talking about crazy racist trash. We don't have promo codes, but buy my, buy my pillow when you can. <laughs> right. There you go. Uh, but so, Reverend, uh, we're, we're down to just about five minutes left, but talk a little bit about... Uh, what you call crazy racist trash. Uh, why is, what is CRT? Why is it so dangerous? And uh, how do we teach our children to, to resist this propaganda? CR, CRT is supposedly critical race theory. But in reality, it's exactly what I named it. It's crazy, it's racist, <laughs> and it's pure trash. It's based on a Marxist ideology that says based on the color of your skin, you're categorized either as an oppressor, if your skin is white and you're Caucasian, or you're oppressed if your skin is, if, if you're what they call a person of color. A POC. Yeah. Now the last time <laughs> Bipox I... Bipox now. <laughs> yeah. The last time I checked, every human being on planet Earth is a person of color. Right. Thank unless, you. <laughs> unless you're a ghost. <laughs> and then you're not a person at all. You're a, you're a spirit. Right. So this whole idea of separating people and having everybody at each other's throats based on a Marxist divisive ideology is devilish. It's evil. It's like I heard some, someone say, that would make Oprah Winfrey, not that I'm picking on her pers precise, precisely, but that would make a black female billionaire oppressed by a white guy from Appalachia that goes to the Salvation Army to get three males and a cop. That is pure nonsense, <laughs> and most people know it. But we're dealing with spiritual wickedness in yeah. high places where people's minds, the Bible says, Satan blinds the mind, yep. he, you know, which automatically blinds our spiritual eyes because our eyes are the window to our soul. So Satan blinds the mind of those who believe not the gospel. Yep. And that is the problem. All of our problems, all of our political and economic problems have to be tied back to their root and their, their root are spiritual problems. Hey Amen. I, I couldn't agree with you more, Reverend. And, you know, if you want to find real racism, you can see the sign behind us. There is plenty Amen. of it still. And uh, it starts at Planned Parenthood, uh, created by a racist mm -hmm. maniac who believed some races were better than other races and that eugenics would help uh, improve the human gene pool. Uh, but she didn't want word to get out that mm -hmm. uh, we want to exterminate mm -hmm. the black people. Or uh, as wait, the letter, in that letter that she wrote to Clarence Gamble, she used the word mm -hmm. colored Negroes. No, yeah. colored Negro. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to the non uh, unbelievable. Like Negro. Truly uh, unbelievable. Uh, Hal, we're down to just a couple of minutes left, but um, what, what you've done here is extraordinary. Uh, I think mm -hmm. this is the 15th year. 15th. Uh, uh, 15th I've been so honored uh, uh, to be able to come here. In fact, I bring my family now. Uh, my kids just absolutely love it. They look forward to it all year. Um, it's selfish motivation would... because your children will be the future counselors and instructors. So that's, <laughs> that's, right. that's why we want them here. Yeah, yeah. well, they, we all appreciate it so much, Hal. But tell the folks out there in the last minute that we have a little bit about Camp Constitution. Campconstitution.net is the website. Mm -hmm. How can people learn more and how can they get here next year? Well, uh, we're a New Hampshire-based charitable trust. We run these week-long camps. Uh, next year will be the same time frame, God willing. Mm -hmm. uh, and just, uh, we, we have a contact on our website. You can just, if you have any questions, we are also on Facebook. You can reach us there. Just reach me directly on my Facebook page, Hal Shirtliff. You'll see this uh, young man next to Dr. Mildred Jefferson. I'm like, that's me, Facebook page. <laughs> and, uh, and, and we also we have year-round activities. We have a speakers bureau. 
And Rev, of course, is one of our speakers, and we travel from, from Georgia to mm -hmm. northern Maine and mm -hmm. points in between, and wherever we're invited. And uh, Rev goes down to Florida on a regular basis, uh, speaking to uh, in, in Naples uh, Church there. And uh, we, we're bringing in uh, Ch uh, Reverend Charles Van Week from South Africa, oh, you know, wow. having him in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. Maine, and... Um, and that will be in the. And we have a weekend camp coming up uh, in late September, early October. In, also, in, not here, but at a camp that's a much more closer to my home, just about 20 minutes away. And so they can come there if they like, and just go to our website, campconstitution.net. Look at it. We have so we also have. We don't have time to talk about the Sam Blumenfeld archive. Yeah, I was actually going to mention it. It's, it's such an extraordinary we have a great collection. Great homeschool research, not just for homeschools, but for educators, for mm -hmm. researchers. And, and we so, found out recently there's a, a college in mm -hmm. Africa that's going to be named after Sam Blumenfeld because mm -hmm. you connected them with all the. the we've been donating uh, Alpha yeah. Sam's Alpha Phonics, yeah. and we mm -hmm. we have a long, uh, uh, just a online friendship. Mm -hmm. And he was so motivated that he wants to name the school after Sam Blumenfeld. Yeah. And, and it's so ironic that all, all these little kids in super mm -hmm. dirt poor mm -hmm. Zimbabwe are going to be better all, readers than 95% yeah. of Americans. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe With, 90, you know, $20,000 yeah. a year budget per kid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just incredible. Yeah. Just incredible. But uh, you guys are doing <laughs> such great work. Uh, we are out of time, folks, but we're going to be bringing more guests from Camp Constitution throughout the rest of the week. Vivek Ramaswamy is actually going to be here Thursday teaching uh, the young people here. There's some just incredible speakers. So We'll bring you as many of them as we can squeeze in. But thanks, folks, for watching. If you're interested, go to campconstitution.net. Obviously, my website is libertysentinel.org. <laughs> Don't forget to support this program and getting great stuff. Go to mypillow.com. Use the promo code Newman. Thanks again for watching. This is the Sentinel Report. Until next time, God bless you all.